Hello, I am Minecraft Phenom08, and today I am doing a short tutorial concerning Industrial Craft 2 nuclear reactors. The mod Industrial Craft 2, or IC2 for short, has its own type of power, which is called Energy Units, or EU for short. Now, there are plenty of generators in this mod that can produce EU, such as the generator here, which produces 10 EU per tick. This burns fuels like coal, charcoal, wood, etc. to create energy, and it does it at 10 EU per tick. The semi-fluid generator is next, and it burns liquid fuels to produce energy. Now it can burn things like crude oil or refined fuel, and it can produce anywhere from 8 EU per tick to 32 EU per tick, dependent upon what fuel you use. Next is the geothermal generator, and that actually uses lava to generate 20 EU per tick. Next up is the solar panel, and it produces a flat 1 EU per tick, but only in the daylight. Now, rain does affect this, and obviously the night affects this as well, so you won't produce energy during a rainstorm or at night. Next, we have the high voltage solar array, and this is actually from the mod Compact Solar Arrays. It just adds some solar arrays that work with industrial craft, but this can produce up to 512 EU per tick, also during the daylight only, but this thing is astronomically expensive. It costs over 5,000 iron ingots to build and almost 7,000 rubber to build, as well as copper and some other stuff. So yeah, this thing's expensive and not a huge payoff. Next up, we have the water mill, and this thing can produce up to 0.25 EU per tick in its passive mode. Now, obviously, that's pretty much nothing as far as energy goes, so that's not a super good option for most people. Uh, lastly, we have the windmill here, and this can produce up to 11 EU per tick. It is wind dependent. The higher you build it, typically up to a certain point, it will produce more power. So, yeah, this isn't a great option either, but it's a, it's a decent passive op option. Now that we know what the other generators from this mod can do, let's take a look at the nuclear reactors. First, before we start dealing with the nuclear reactors, we I should mention that having a hazmat suit is highly necessary to dealing with nuclear reactors. And that is because this protects you from radiation that you get from the uranium and the plutonium in the fuel rods here. So the hazmat suit consists of a scuba helmet, a hazmat suit, hazmat suit leggings, and rubber boots. Now, I already have this on if we take a look right here. If I were to take one of these things off, I get the radiation debuff, which will take my health down if I was in survival mode and eventually kill me. So this is a highly necessary step before you start dealing with nuclear reactors. Now, nuclear reactors themselves are highly configurable because they have these slots in the interior of the nuclear reactor here in which you can place items like fuel rods, heat vents, and heat exchangers. Now, this nuclear reactor is a super basic design. It has a single uranium fuel rod and a single heat vent. If I turn this on with redstone signal as nuclear reactors turn on with redstone signal, you see that the output is 5 EU per tick, which is not particularly high. Even the base generator over there, which burns coal and charcoal and things like that, produces more power than this. So what's the advantage of nuclear reactors exactly? Well, just like I said, there are lots of slots. You can fill these things up with more fuel rods and get more power. This reactor design, uh, which consists of quad MUX fuel rods and LZH condensators, which I won't actually go over the condensators in this video because it's a relatively complicated setup to get it to work right. But if you can, if you are willing to use them, you can get a lot of power. Uh, this reactor produces 4,131 EU per tick, which is far, far, far more than any of those reactors or any of those generators over there can produce. So that's one of the advantages. Another advantage is the semi-modular design. If you'll notice right here, uh, all these slots right here are X'd out which means we cannot place anything in these slots. However, you can gain access to those slots by using additional reactor chambers around a nuclear reactor. Now, this reactor right here has two additional reactor chambers, one on the left, one on the right, so that gives me access to two more columns, or one column per additional reactor chamber uh, in this nuclear reactor. So now I have five total columns. The nuclear reactor itself has uh, three three columns available and then if you fully build out a nuclear reactor you get all of this available so you have all this space to place 
fuel rods, heat vents, and heat exchangers to make lots and lots of power. To actually make power in a nuclear reactor, we need fuel rods, and that's what I have over here. There are two different types of fuel and three different types of fuel rods, so you have a total of six options for fuel rods, essentially. Um, first off, we have the basic fuel rod uranium and the fuel rod MOX. Now these, at their base amounts, they produce 4 heat units per second and 5 EU per tick. Now I say base amount because the amount of heat is also dependent upon what other items are around the fuel rods. For example, if you put fuel rods beside fuel rods, you'll produce more heat and more power. But we'll go over that a little bit later in more detail. Um, also, the MOX fuel rods can produce more power if the reactor itself is hotter, and we'll go over that as well in just a little bit. Now, the dual fuel rods, they will produce 24 heat units per second and 20 EU per tick at their base amount. Lastly, we have the quad fuel rods, and they will produce 96 heat units per second and 60 EU per tick. Now, obviously, if you can do some math here... Um, the dual fuel rod is made up of two basic fuel rods with a iron plate in the middle, I believe, is the crafting recipe. So you get a higher efficiency out of uranium as you go up, as you make the fuel rod from a single to a dual, from a dual to a quad, you get higher efficiency out of your uranium. For example, each fuel rod over here produces 5 EU per tick, whereas here, because you have two of them and it produces 20 at uh, total, it will produce 10 EU per tick per fuel rod. Now over here in a quad configuration, you have four fuel rods and you have 60 EU per tick. So you take 60 EU per tick divided by four, you actually get uh, 15 EU per tick per fuel rod. So obviously your efficiency goes higher as you have the uh, quad fuel rods, but you also produce a lot, lot more heat. So that's kind of the balancing act of this, of configuring a reactor. So next, let's take a look at the heat vents. Now that we know that fuel rods produce heat and power, we need a way to dissipate the heat within a nuclear reactor. Because if we don't, it will eventually explode. Now there are five different heat vents here, and I will describe what each of them does in some detail. Uh, first off, we have the basic heat vent. Looks like this. It dissipates six heat units per second, and it will not pull heat from the hull of a reactor. And I'll, describe, I'll explain that in just a little bit. The crafting recipe is this right here, and the heat vent looks like this. It has a durability of 1,000, and what that is is basically the durability is the amount of heat it can have in it itself before it breaks. If it gets over 1,000 heat, it will break, and that's obviously not a good thing. Next, we have the advanced heat vent. It looks like this. It can dissipate 12 heat units per second, it also will not pull any heat from the hull of the reactor. Its crafting recipe is this right here, and it also has a durability of 1000. Next up we have the overclocked heat vent. It looks like this, and it can dissipate 20 heat units per second. It can pull heat from the hull, and it can pull up to 36 heat units per second from the hull. Now this means that it can actually pull more heat from the hull than it can dissipate. So you need to keep an eye on these things, and you need to have pretty good reactor design. Otherwise, you can easily kill your overclock heat vents because, like I said, they can pull more heat from the hull than they can actually dissipate. And the crafting recipe is right here. Uh, second to last, we have the reactor heat vent here, and it is quite different from the other heat vents. It looks like this, and it dissipates 5 heat units per second, but it can only pull heat from the hull. And here is the crafting recipe. It looks like this. Lastly, we have component heat vents, and they are also quite different from any of the other heat vents. They will dissipate 4 heat units per second. It should be per second. And they cool every adjacent component. Now they don't actually soak up heat themselves as we see they have no durability. Um, their crafting recipe is like this and I'm going to explain exactly how much heat each one of these is dissipating. Now this component heat vent right here is dissipating four heat units per second because it is only adjacent to one advanced heat vent. If I were to place two component heat vents like this uh, this one would not be dissipating any heat, as it is not beside a component that actually has heat in it. Um, 
so lastly over here we have five component heat vents um, the four on the corners are also doing or they are doing eight heat units per second and that is because they are each adjacent to two advanced heat vents but the one in the middle here it will actually dissipate 16 heat units per second as it is up against four ad advanced heat vents um, so it can do 16 heat units per second and that is how you dissipate heat from a reactor now that we know a little bit about how to get heat into a reactor and how to dissipate heat let's talk about component versus hall heat now hall heat is this right here it's basically how much heat the reactor itself has and for this particular one reactor it currently has 20.52 percent hall heat now if this hall heat reaches 100 percent this reactor will explode and you're going to have a bad time if that happens the component heat is all of the individual components themselves have durability and that ex that is the expression of how much heat they currently have if i turn this reactor on these heat vents aren't actually able to dissipate the amount of heat that this reactor is making so we see the durability falling pretty rapidly if i turn this off the durability starts to rise by 12 per second and that's because the advanced heat vents can dissipate 12 heat units per second and so that's how uh, that's how component versus whole heat works. In a nuclear reactor, sometimes it is important to actually spread the heat out rather than to immediately dissipate it. Because sometimes you are producing too much heat in one particular location, then you can dissipate in that location. So there are actually heat exchangers that you can put into a reactor to spread out the heat before you, can dissip before you dissipate it. Now, the first one here is the basic heat exchanger. It can pull four heat units per second from the hull of the reactor and 12 heat units per second from adjacent components. Its crafting recipe is like this and it has a durability of 2,500. So it can soak up up to 2,499 heat before it breaks itself. Next we have the component heat exchanger and it looks like this. It can suck up no heat from the hull of the reactor but it can suck up up to 36 heat units per second from adjacent components and move it obviously its crafting recipe is like this and it has a durability of 5000 next up is the advanced heat exchanger it is essentially just a beefed up version of the regular heat exchanger its rates are twice that of the regular heat exchanger at 8 heat units per second from the hull and 24 heat units per second from adjacent components crafting recipe is like this right here and it has a durability of 10,000. Lastly we have the reactor heat exchanger and this one is rather different than all of the other heat exchangers. It can pull 72 heat units per second from the hull of a reactor but it will not pull any heat from adjacent components. This heat exchanger needs another heat exchanger to move heat to heat vents to actually be dissipated. So this will pull heat from the hull of a reactor but it needs adjacent heat vents to actually move it to other components that can actually dissipate the heat. Its crafting recipe is like this right here and what I mean by the you need adjacent heat exchangers um, a setup like this won't work. The reactor heat exchanger will pull heat from the hull but it will not exchange it to the adjacent components as its component heat exchange rate is zero. You need to set up something like this where you have a reactor heat exchanger surrounded by or uh, with at least one adjacent, uh, another type of heat exchanger, and then you can have your heat vents around those heat exchangers to actually dissipate the heat. So this is a really good way to pull heat from the hull of your reactor if you need to do so and dissipate it in another location away from the fuel rods themselves. Now that we know most of the components that can actually go into nuclear reactors, let's go over the differences between MOX fuel and uranium fuel. Uranium fuel is the base fuel that you will definitely start out with, and it has a durability of 20,000, whereas the MOX fuel rods have a durability of 10,000. Now what this means is that the fuel rods will actually last 10,000 seconds for the MOX variety or 20,000 seconds for the uranium variety. This means that the fuel lasts, the uranium fuel lasts about 5 hours and 33 minutes and something odd seconds whereas the MOX fuel will last 2 hours and 46 minutes and something odd seconds if I remember right. 
Now, basically, this means that these things will output quite a bit of power for a long, long time without having to be refueled. Also, there is a difference in energy output. If I were to turn these on right now, um, and let's go ahead and do that, the uranium variety will produce a flat 120 EU per tick, no matter how hot this reactor is here. And as we can see, it is heating up. However, the MOX fuel rods will produce more power as the reactor heats up. So we can use this to our advantage with certain reactor designs as we see. It's still creeping up. Let's turn this off before I get an explosion of a sort. So yeah, we can use this to our advantage. Now I'm going to go over a few reactor designs that I've actually used in my own worlds, in my actual survival worlds. Now this is one of my favorite designs here. Uh, basically what it is is MOX fuel rods. They are dual fuel rods and we have advanced heat vents and component heat vents. I am running the reactor at somewhere between 64 and 68 percent heat and that is to produce more power with the MOX fuel rods. I actually have an additional reactor chamber underneath the nuclear reactor so I have that fourth column unlocked here and as we see this produces 443 EU per tick. Uh, this same reactor design used with uranium fuel rods will only produce 120 EU per tick so obviously that's quite a bit of gain over the regular fuel rods. Now this is only possible because I'm using these advanced heat vents here which do not pull heat from the reactor hull and obviously the component heat vents also do not. And next up I have a design for quad uranium fuel rods and it looks something like this. We have basically two sets of quad uranium fuel rods at either end of the reactor with it being surrounded by overclocked heat vents because they dissipate the most heat and then we have some heat exchangers and I have all these heat exchangers in here because it is not possible to dissipate this amount of heat in this small of an area here. So basically the heat exchangers are to spread out the heat throughout the reactor and this reactor design is completely stable. It's a pretty good design if you only have uh, uranium fuel rods available as it typically takes a little while to actually get the plutonium to make MOX fuel rods. So this is a really good design. Uh, lastly, we have the mega reactor. I, I don't know what else to call this. But this thing uh, uses LCH condensators, which I didn't go over in this video because it's pretty complicated setup to get all this to work. But um, possibly I could go over that in the future. But anyways, if you can get this to work, you can put in a lot of fuel in these reactors. Now this reactor, as currently, it will produce 14,285 EU per tick. Obviously, that's a lot of power. So lastly, because I want to do something for show, um, I'm going to blow up a reactor. Obviously, this is a worst case scenario and you don't want to do this. So let's head on over to my area where I have a reactor set up to explode. And here we have a nuclear reactor that is actually more of a bomb. Basically, what I've done is I've filled it with quad fuel rods. So this thing will produce a lot of heat really quickly and it will quickly explode. So obviously this is what you do not want to happen if you're running a nuclear reactor at your base, but just because we can, let's watch it. And uh, yeah, it can produce quite a hole here. Uh, so you don't want your base looking like this. So when setting up a reactor, it is important to design it well. Hopefully now that you know quite a bit about nuclear reactors from the mod Industrial Craft 2, I should definitely point out that there are some tools to help you design what exactly should go into the interior of a nuclear reactor. And there is a smartphone app from the Google Play Store called IC2 Planner. It's the letters IC2 Planner. And that can help you design a reactor that can be safe and powerful. Also, there is a desktop version. I will try to link that down in the description below. But anyways, hopefully you learned a little something during this tutorial about the nuclear reactors from the mod Industrial Craft 2. If you like this video, definitely like it and share it. If you uh, enjoy watching automation in modded Minecraft, definitely consider subscribing to my channel because I do a lot of automation. I have currently have an automate everything series in which I pretty much attempt to automate everything that I can. Anyways, signing off, I am Minecraft Phenom 08 and I will see you next time.